Hello guys, welcome to 10 Plus. I'm excited because today I have with us a very remarkable gentleman, um, very inspiring, Mr. Kasim Bremer. I call him AKA Casablanca. He is the creator, the producer, and the director of the world acclaim YouTube phenomenon called Yawa Skit. I'm sure that most of you have run into um, his kits before. Yawa, it's become very popular across um, several countries and is doing a remarkable, um, he's doing a remarkable job. And it's my delight and pleasure to have Mr. Kasim Breimer with us today. Yes, boss. Yes, boss. Um, <laughs> you know, we've come a long way. Um, Kasim and I have worked together for, I think, over 10 years yeah. now. And um, many years ago, when we were doing what we called then the Yes Summit, Summit yes, yes. yes. Um, he used to be in charge of all of our media works. Um, and that happened for, I think, about four or five years. Yes. From, from two, 2012 yes. till like almost 2017, 2018. Yes. Yes. Um, and it's such a joy to have you here. Thank so, you. I mean, I'm very inspired by your story because I've seen you from the grounds, how you began many years ago and how you remain consistent doing what you do. And then today we are hearing about Yawa's kids all around the countries in Africa and outside Africa. So it's such a joy to be a part of your story. So first question, everybody knows about Yawa's kids. Yep. All right. You have hundreds of thousands of views every week on YouTube. Um, so we know about Yawa's kids, we know about all your celebrities on your set, but most people have no idea who Kasim Brahma is. In fact, they have no idea that you are the creator, the producer, and the director of Yawa's kids. So we want to know who is Mr. Kasim? Um, Kasim is, is, Kasim is just a regular guy from a village called Warake in Edo State. Um, I'm a filmmaker. I study television in Joss. Um, and I enjoy making videos. I've always enjoyed making videos. I just want to tell stories, entertain people, and also, you know, push my own worldview, how I see things out there. So basically, I'm just an ordinary guy making videos and you know when you began you had done a few um video shoots i saw your work first with you know um then a gospel artist and i liked you know your work and then we got introduced by a friend of mine um, barista paul and we began to work together and then i remember when you did the first yawa skits yes all right and i would like to tell the story but if i remember correctly you did, for those of you who have watched the first Yawa Skate, and I think it won an award, or it was nominated, it was nominated. for an award. Yes. Um, the African... It was nominated for AMVCA. Yes, yes, yes. So I recall that that video that was nominated for an award, you shot that video with just one camera. Yes. So tell us how did Yawa Skate, how did you start Yawa Skate? How did it begin? Okay, um, uh, before Yawa Skit, um, I've made a couple of short films. Made, you know, like eight short films that probably people didn't see. Um, yeah, went for a couple of film festivals right and there, but, you know, I just kept on making videos, making videos. Then, um, then I wrote the Yawa Skit. <clears throat> then it wasn't even Yawa Skit, it was just a short film that I titled Hustle. Mm. So I wrote it and I started looking for actors to do it because, of course, I can't, I'm, I, my acting is bad. So then, um, then I met um, Siphon. And in fact, before then, that's uh, Callistos. That's Callistos. We were already like friends in my neighborhood in Kubwa, <clears throat> Abuja. So, you know, there was a day we were just hanging out and he, then I already had the script. So he just did something and I just looked at him. I'm like, this guy looked like the character in the script. And from there, I just started talking to him. Look, I want you to play this. And he was like, ah, I've, not act I've not acted before. I said, but maybe if we do a little bit of brush up, you know, you pull it through. And he was like, he was hesitant. Like, ah, I've not acted before. I don't think I can do it. And somehow, 
you know, I was able to convince him. And I said, okay, let's do it. And uh, did uh, like a day talking him through it, through the script and everything. Then we went out to, to shoot. And as at that time, I think I had, I had, I didn't had really have equipment. I had a, a Canon 6, 600D there at that time, just one camera, um, no mics, mm. no <clears throat> tripod, no nothing, just a camera. So as at that time, the script was written um, according to what I have. Yeah. Because I didn't have mic. I mean, if you those have saw the first episode. Yes. yes. I, it was a silent film. Yeah, so for the first episode, for <laughs> those of you who haven't seen it, it's about um, a guy who was hungry and then saw a madman um, pick up on people's food and then he began to pretend like he was a mad guy, but there was absolutely no, no dialogue. No dialogue. No, yes, no talking at yeah. all. And that was done because you didn't have a mic. I didn't have a mic. <laughs> so wow. it was like, is that I write a script that um, goes with what I have? Or I write a normal script and go out and borrow mic and go and rent a mic. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have funds to rent the mic. So it was like, what I had that time was probably like 20,000 naira. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, you know what? This one, I'll use it to, everybody that's on my cell, I'll use it to buy snacks mm -hmm. and drinks for them. So there was it, was, it was, it was just, you know, let's just do it. Yeah. It was just, you know, let's do it. Let's make this, let's make this video and put it out there. And, and thanks to you know, my friends um, that came around, and, you know, I was able to convince them, you know, are you, you know, help me, help me do mm -hmm. this, help me do this. And we came together and we shot it, you know. Um, I, initially, I didn't you know, expect it to go out there, just like every other shot. But then I don't, I don't think you were on YouTube yet. Yes, I didn't have a you YouTube know, channel So, then. I mean, that means the spread of that particular episode didn't happen through YouTube. I think it's just people posting, on, I don't know. Yeah, I think it, it was very popular at the time, but there was no YouTube. You were on YouTube, at least I recall that much. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I after shooting it, um, I was I asked myself, okay, w w then what do I do with it now? Mm. You know, am I going to distribute it? Am I? How do I send it out? So that's when I now opened a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Then I posted it on YouTube. Mm. Then the next thing, it was on people's phones. It was everywhere. People mm -hmm. were watching it. You know, and it just went, you know, initially when we posted it on YouTube, there was no views. It was like maybe 50k views, 50 mm. views, mm. 100 views. So I was like, okay. Then the next thing, it wasn't sh like trending on YouTube. Yeah. It, was ev it was everywhere. everywhere People else. have downloaded it. Yes. It was every phone. Yes. And I was like, oh, this is good. Yeah. And from there on, as people were watching it, you know, there was this. Um, this encouragement, like, you know what, I still have more stories, mm -hmm. okay, let me do another one, let me do another one. Yeah. So I just kept making videos for the fun of it. Yeah. For the fun of it, like, okay, make this video. My joy and satisfaction was just that people were watching it, yeah. people were enjoying it. And I have so much of these stories I wanted to tell, so mm -hmm. I said, okay, you know what, let me just tell these stories. You know, I, since I have the stories, why not just tell them? So yeah. I started telling these stories. So why the name Yawa Skate? So when or we why the name Yawa? Yeah, okay, so when we did the first episode, um, we, uh, when we were about to post it on YouTube, we didn't have a title. It was initially on the script, where he had hustle on it, but it was a working title. Mm. So I was with Sifu, I was like, ah, this thing, what would we find? What would mm. we title this thing? So like, let's make it more indigenous. Let's make it more Nigeria. So we started thinking of title, like that, like that. As we're thinking of title now, then we're watching it. Then I think towards the end, we just said, I'm going to see Yawa. Yeah. And I was like, and I said, that's the name. That's the title. That's, that's the, the title. Yeah. Because it's, it's Yawa means trouble. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, so I was like, ah, Yawa gas at the end. Mm -hmm. ah, let's be let me, let me yeah. Yawa skip. So it was Yawa initially. They were like, okay, since we want to shoot videos, um, they are like skits. So mm -hmm. it's okay, Yawa skits. Mm -hmm. That's how we started with it. And, and interestingly, speaking about skits, um, at the time you began Yawa, this whole skit thing wasn't popular at all. Yeah. I mean, now we have a lot of other big guys doing skits. Mm -hmm. um, but at the time that you started this many, many years ago, the whole concept of skit creation wasn't really out there. People had short videos that they did maybe as documentaries or docu-series, um, but nothing that was aimed at making people laugh and at the same time, you know, putting out some small, small life lessons, all right? I think that you are one of the few 
that pioneered this industry. Sadly, I don't think a lot of people realize that. Okay, um, I know at the time, you know, you were out there. Um, I think Mark Angel yes. was out there, um, and it was basically, you know, Yawa skits at the time, and then the Mark, Mark Angel, Angel thing, yeah. and then eventually became a very popular thing. Yes. But um, the way you did yours was quite unique because at the time you put in a lot of efforts in the story creation, in the production, in the editing, yes. compared to you know even you know, um, the other skits out there at the time. Mm -hmm. So but how did you manage to remain consistent in a time that what you were doing was not popular? Um, okay, first of all, I, it was just the, uh, if I say passion, it sounds cliche, but it was just yeah. the joy of making mm -hmm, the videos. Mm -hmm. It was just the joy of making the videos. Um, in fact, we didn't know that it was going to become this thing. Um, there were, then, of course, there was Mackenzie. Um, you know, there was one time he reached out. He was like, oh, you guys do the same thing we do, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, we started talking about it. For me, it was just the joy of creating, joy of putting the videos out there for people to enjoy. I wasn't expecting anything. Yeah. I, I think the only thing that probably I was expecting was, Okay, then maybe if I put more videos out, maybe somebody that wants to make a movie will call me and mm -hmm. say, oh, I like the way you do this thing. I like the way you tell stories. Oh, I like the way you... Um, because then I can... I've learned how to shoot. I've learned how to edit. I've learned how to do sound. I've learned how to... Like, almost all the things that you can do in filmmaking, I've learned it because I can't pay anybody to do it for me. So I have to edit my... I have to shoot myself. I have to write the script. I have to shoot i have to edit i have to know how to post it on youtube mm -hmm. after I, I make sure i learned all these things right so as of that time it was like okay maybe if i start putting this video out, somebody might spot me and say ah this guy I like what you're doing come and join my movie set come and you know work with me or as of that time i was making wedding videos you know small music videos here and there uh, maybe people will see my Content. And you did my wedding video. Yes. Yeah, so I think that we need to put it out there. Uh, Mr. Kasim Braima is the one who shot our wedding video, both our traditional wedding yep. and um, our white wedding. So I'm sure we're going to put that video on YouTube <laughs> very soon. But I mean, right. back to the video over 10 years ago. But I mean, if you watch it, you'll be so impressed. Yeah, so. Yeah, so it was just me putting it out there. But I didn't expect it to become what it is. Okay. And, and also, I remember. I remember a funny story where someone, um, someone was telling me, oh, you're putting these videos on, on YouTube f for free. And, and he said, you know, people don't have data to watch. As at that time, 2014, mm -hmm. people don't really, the data was a little bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. So people don't have data to watch these things on YouTube. So it was more like, yeah, you're wasting your time, yeah. you know. And for me, it was, it was the, I was already fulfilled. In fact, it was more like, by the time we go on location, we shoot this video, and I come back home and I edit this video, and me and my guys sit down and we're watching it and, and we're enjoying it. That that alone was okay for me. Like, uh, uh let me do this thing, yeah. you know. And as at that time too, um, man, as at that time it wasn't. It was just creating. Yeah, so the goal wasn't. Yeah. to make money, the yeah. goal wasn't to become popular. So there are two fundamental things that I hear you say. First of all, you did your first episode working strictly with what you had. Yeah. Um, you didn't have a mic, so you had to write a story and direct a script that didn't require mics. Yeah. You had one camera and you had to do a full skit with one camera. Now, many people who don't understand what it takes to shoot a movie may not see the seriousness of what it takes to shoot a full skit with one camera because in in that particular skit, there was a part where Kalisos was running, yeah. you know, through an, um, an alley yeah. and all of that. So it meant that and you had different views of that. Yep. So you had to use one camera, put one side, he will run. You would take the camera again, put somewhere else again. He will do the running again because you were getting different angles, angles. with one camera. Yeah. So what you would have done with one or two takes, mm -hmm. you had to probably do with like 10 takes. Yeah. But all of that required a lot of creativity. Yeah. All right. And then you had to do a full story, well understood, very funny, extremely funny. What actually, your, yeah. sorry, actually, it wasn't supposed to be funny. 
Oh. The idea was it like okay, that was, was comedy. It, yeah, it, it, that was the idea. That yeah. wasn't the idea. It was just I wanted to just tell a story, right? Then I saw people watching it and they are laughing. I'm yeah. like, okay, this thing is funny. Yes. But to me, it wasn't supposed to be funny. Mm. It was just a story about. In fact, what inspired another thing that really inspired Yawa was I think there was a time I was I was just trekking around Wusi Market and I was just looking at young people just like me, you know, some with backpack, you know. And I'm like, everybody standing on this space have a story. Mm -hmm. there's, there's probably somebody here that doesn't have transport to go back home. There's somebody here that, you know, looking for a daily bread. There's somebody here that is looking for somebody that will just bless him. There's somebody here that is just looking for an opportunity. And I'm like, you know, I want to create a character that represents these guys. Yeah. Somebody that just go out there and say, okay, what am I doing today? Oh, am I going to get a daily bread today? Mm -hmm. Or somebody's going to bless me? Somebody is out there. Or am I going to hustle somebody? Am I going to steal from somebody? Am I going to, you know, so that, I just wanted to like tell a story mm -hmm. of a regular hustler yeah. looking for a daily bread. That's right. So it wasn't supposed to be funny. But when this first episode came out, it was, people were watching it, 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 it laughing. It was extremely funny. And, and still one of the, you know, one of the iconic skits that you have. Um, and, why for me, why it's important for me is that we live in a time that many young people have so many excuses why they can't achieve great success. Um, and they are waiting for things to be ideal. And on the path to success, they are, there's really almost no ideal situation. Yep. All right? Yep. If it's success in your business, success at work, success in marriage, success as parents, there's really no ideal situation, okay? And what your story tells us is that you took what you had and made the most of it. And for me, that's remarkable because I've had to teach many times, telling young people, um, use what you have. And sometimes I have, you know, a saying that what you have is enough. Mm -hmm. At every point in your life, what you have per time is enough to engineer what is required for the next level. And that's what I hear in your story. Number two, you weren't trying to gain popularity. You weren't even trying to make a funny skit, all right? You weren't trying to become super wealthy. But I mean, that was not your objective. The goal was to find expression mm -hmm. for what you felt was your giftings and your passion. And in doing that, success found you. All right, you found success and then success found you. So in view of that, what do you think, just for those who want to learn from your story, what do you think, in your opinion, are the reasons behind the success you have seen with the Yawa Skate? I mean, there are things you are doing, obviously, that has given, it's, it may look like it's accidental, like, I mean, I didn't plan this, but there are certain things you're doing that has resulted in such a remarkable success. It's remarkable because there's a time I know, I know your story, there's a time that you didn't even have 100K to shoot the next kid. That was how I knew about Yawa's yes. You know, you came, you played it for me, I was laughing and, you know, we're all just having a great time with it. And then, you know, you were trying to look for 100,000, 150,000 to do the next thing. So, but there are certain things you did right. What would you say, in your opinion, are some of the reasons behind the success you have seen with Yawa's Kate? First of all, I'll say is this storytelling. When I'm thinking about the story, I'm not saying, I'm not like, okay, you know what, let me think about something, you know, from outside. The stories were within me. They were like stories I could relate to. They were from gist, they were from, um, you know, they were things that we see every day. Right, so when the story comes out, when you when the story comes out, a lot of people can relate to it. Yeah. In fact, we've done skits where we've done stories where people will be like, "Ah, I was in this situation. Oh, I saw somebody doing this." Right, so it's we taking that everyday story, you know, and making it interesting. That was, I think, that was one thing, you know, mm. that telling that everyday story. The second thing was just. Um, consistency which was you know it's kind of difficult to be consistent especially in the beginning where there was zero money zero, zero results zero, zero everything in fact as a matter of fact there was a time where we've done like a couple of skits we've done we've gone for amvca we came back and um yama was making zero money zero mm. and that was like already like 
three years into it, we're making zero money. And then Kalisus was popular. You know, he's walking down the street, people are saying hi to him, and all, you know. As at that time, what kept us going was just the consistency. It was just the fact that we enjoy what we were doing. You're like, okay, we could just put the video out. It wasn't, there was no push to be successful. It was just, at least I found something that I can be with. I found my space. I want to just be here. I want to make videos, right? It was, you know, so the work kept us going was, one, we're telling the everyday story. We didn't want to sound superficial. Or we didn't want to even tell what we don't know. Like I tell people, I say, I cannot tell stories I, I don't know. So one, you stayed within your strength. Yes. Um, two, you were consistent. consistent. And I know that now you have a huge team. Yeah. Um, but at the time, you didn't have that much team. By the time, it was just me. Yeah. So it was just um, a, a, a lot of funny. If I right now, when uh, me and Kali, we sit sometimes we talk about back in the days, we just laugh because mm -hmm. there was a time where <clears throat> it was just me shooting. Only me. So we had a couple of times where I will put the camera on the tripod and I'm like, guy, just walk out go there. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, then I'll hold the mic, right? Then bought the mic, right? So I'll hold the mic and I'll say, okay, just stand there. Then I'll press record and I'll go and hold the mic. Mm. You know, then when it passed, I was just thinking, okay, cut, then I'll go and mm. press, you know, stop the mic, stop the camera from rolling. So, you know, then there were times where, you know, like I said, I will write. Then I uh, produce, shoot. So there's a lot of hard work. It was just one man team. Yeah. Do everything to the end. It was one man team. So I, I see hard work here. I also see smart work, um, which is something that I believe in strongly. People think that smart work is an alternative to hard work. But what I say to people is that hard work um, um, is required for smart work. So. Uh, smart work actually is a kind of hard work. Mm -hmm. It's hard work to be smart. If smart work was easy, everyone will do smart yeah. work. Okay, so you, you've had to employ a lot of smart work here because it takes a lot of creativity and you have to have a very daring heart to do what you've done. And then a lot of hard work because I mean, I know you, I know how hard you work, okay? How did you manage to produce something so grand and remain so invisible? Because in most of the popular skits that we see around, the primary celebrity still owns the show. The show yeah. is the director, the producer, the creator, you know, and still, you know, the main actor or the main celebrity or whatever name you guys call them. Mm -hmm. But in your own case, people don't even know that you are behind this at all. Mm -hmm. So how do you manage that structure? How do you condition your mind to produce something so grand and feel comfortable in obscurity? Um, I, I don't know. It's just, I've always, I think, I've always wanted to be behind the scenes mm. and just be the one creating. Um, and for, for Yawa, it was more like, and Yawa and other things that I've created, uh, I did see myself um, as being, if I had done the acting, it wouldn't have been this successful. I didn't see myself in the character, you know, and most of the time I tell people, um, if, you know, people that come to me that I mentor or, or, you know, and I tell them, like, look, sometimes the idea can be yours, right? But you might need another person to bring that idea to life. Don't force yourself into the idea. You know, if you, you want to do a, a a comedy film and you look like one guy that's supposed to do Rambo for instance you know and you're forcing yourself into the role because it's your script or you want to be popular or you want to get the same thing these actors are getting I mean I've gone to places where I'm working with Kali we want to enter like a, 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 a space and you enter and they'll push me aside Mm. They'll say, hey, no, 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 you can't come in. <laughs> Until he turns back, I'll be like, ah, that's my producer, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know? But yeah. I don't feel anything. Yeah. I don't feel anything. The, the most important thing, my joy is, oh, this thing that we are working on, this thing that we started like a joke, is becoming successful that, yeah. you know, um, people are seeing the product mm -hmm, of mm -hmm, this thing and mm -hmm. they are, you know, embracing it, they are loving it. Mm. So for me, the, the, my fulfillment is just seeing everything being successful, seeing the actors that 
I'm working with, they are being successful, seeing the people that are working with me, all the, you know, they're out there and people know them, people appreciate them. It's, it's okay for me. I don't really, work, I don't see myself in those characters. Maybe in the future, maybe somebody will see me in another character yeah. and say, okay, you come and do this. Because what, what, what you're doing is usually more popular in the West. Um, so in many other countries where, you know, the foundations of what you guys do began, um, it was okay to just be behind the scene. You could have someone who is like a producer or an executive producer making billions on a movie, making hundreds of millions on a movie, and nobody knows his name. He doesn't really care. You know, he's working his ass out. You know, he's on set every single time, doing what he needs to do, but nobody knows his name. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't really matter. As long as the brand, the movie, you know, is doing well, that's all that counts. But over here, it's, in, it's very important to be seen. So I think that it's a lot of, uh, it's a unique leadership skill that is not very peculiar to our context to say that I'm just happy for this thing to work even if nobody knows my name, okay? And that's why for, for 10 plus as a show, we felt that we wanted to hear your story because I mean, it's very unique and it's a very powerful leadership quality to say that the project, the projection and the profiting of a vision is more important than my face. Yeah. You know, and eventually the project, the projection and the profit will carry your name timelessly. Even if your face is not seen all the time. It's a legacy that you've built and it can be undone. So who would you say has inspired you? Who inspires you? I mean, how, how did you get inspired for this? Is there anybody, a mentor? Oh, clearly, you know, I was going to ask you, Mentorship or money, but clearly it's not money. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that is already clear. Yeah. So, um, is there anyone who has inspired you? Is there anything that has inspired you to do what you do? Um, uh, I mean, a, a lot of people have inspired me. A, um, a lot of situations too have inspired me. Um, me just wanting to just find where I belong you know and just do my thing and and be afraid of nothing you know just you know do it and not be afraid of failing you know just fail in fact as a mother of fact i just wanted to do it i didn't care if i fail i just wanted to just be in one space so a lot of people have inspired me you know, people like you come on boss you know mm -hmm. people that you know, they're doing their thing. They're, you see them putting on, putting the hard work, you know. And some, in fact, sometimes I think I don't work hard enough. If I'm most of the time, I'll be like, no, I'm not working hard enough, you know. Um, I should do more, I should do more, you know, I should put in more. So when I see people that, you know, it's just, just people working hard, you know. Um, when I see successful people and I'm like, okay, that means they've put in a lot to make that thing happen, you know. So it's just me, just people, situations, everything inspire me. Everything, mm -hmm. that, everything positive inspire me. I'll be like, okay, this person is putting in a lot of work. I need to put in a lot of work because, like you said, um, smart work. People think you have to work smart. You don't have to work hard. Um, for me... Oh, you just got to work. So yeah. hard or smart, you will work. There's always work. Yeah. You know, uh, even till now, you find out that we are editing till midnight. Yeah. You find out that sometimes two days we don't sleep because the story has to be done. You know, someone asked me one time, I said, um, so we, we, the story was supposed to come out on Friday and I was losing my mind. Had some, I think we, a card corrupted, and we we're trying to retrieve the clip. Then we we're running out of time. I was losing my mind, and someone said, "Come on, it's not like you're working for somebody, right? This is your show. You decide. You, you call the shot. You decide when it comes out. If you say the story show is not going to come out on a Friday and it comes out on Saturday, nobody's going to beat you. It's your show." And I said, "It is not that the fact that it comes out um, on, on any time I want to put it out." Is the discipline of putting it out exactly when I said I want to put it out. Discipline, very cool. I must hold on to that discipline. And I, that's what I tell my, my, my um, team. 
it is not, we can actually say, okay, we take a break. We don't want to do any video anymore for now, right? I can't do that. I'm not answering to anybody, right? Yes, uh, let's say I'm as the, the fans, uh, the subscribers are the boss. We have to give them the video. But if I say I'm not going to do it, nobody's going to say, hey, why are you not putting this video out? Nobody's paying me salary, you know? But it was, is that, you know what? If I say I have to do it, I have to do it. So even when I'm losing my mind, I am losing sleep. Sometimes we are feeling dizzy. You know, you've not slept for like a week because you want to get it done. You know, you're like, you know what? I'll sleep after I do it. Yeah. I'll sleep after this video is out. Yeah. This video must be out. By tomorrow, five o'clock, that I say this video will be out, this video must be out five o'clock. If it requires that we all stay awake to make sure this video is out, it must be out. Yeah. You know, so it's just that self-discipline. Yeah, and that that's, 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 that's important. Discipline, um, if I hear you right, discipline is the quality of decisions, actions, and commitment that you have when nobody's watching. That's real discipline. Yeah. Um, it is being able to do the right thing in spite and regardless of applaud. Yes, All right. Yeah. And that is what I've seen you do. Um, many of you may not know, but many years ago, um, when I was looking for 100K and 30K and 50K, <laughs> you know, um, uh. I would give something small towards Yawa's kids. And I mean, if you read my profile, I think it's still my profile till now, I'm sure the guys here will confirm that. So if you see my profile, you see uh, for my executive producer, producer of yes. Yawa's kids. So yes. um, I have to put it there because I mean, um, yeah. I paid my dues. Yes. So many yes. years ago, when he did his first episode, he wanted to do the second and third, yeah. um, which was before you were nominated for that award. You had had like three or so episodes out yeah. at the time. Um, and we gave you a very small token. It was actually yeah. a very small amount, mm. like 100K or less or something, yeah. you know, and you were gracious enough to name me one of the executive producers of the show yeah. that's added to my portfolio, yes. all right? So, yes. so that's part of being consistent in obscurity because I had no idea, just like you didn't have any idea, that the year was gonna become this big, okay? Now, it has become a timeless, brand to say this guy was once an executive producer and that's the importance of consistency doing what is right however big or small something seems and that's your story yeah. um so however don't forget to like to subscribe um to share leave a comment and, and leave a comment and turn on <laughs> your notifications yeah. on our channel and um, we're going to be back with mr kasim brimer on the next episode. Um, we're already out of time for this episode. So don't go anywhere. This conversation is ongoing. And still, don't forget to go and check the Yawas Kids YouTube channel. I, I yeah. know that you have a new channel again. Yes, Yawas Kids TV. So there's Yawas Kids TV. Yeah, we have a different show there. Yes, and he just began a new hit series again. Okay, and we'll talk about that when we come back. So don't go anywhere. Join us on the next episode. Thank you very much. We love you.